welcome back. I hope you've had a good week. And if you're new, hello, my name is Tracy. Welcome to my home here in rural Sussex, England. This week you find me on the house veranda or porch, depending on where you are in the world. And I've had a really busy few weeks making over this place. I've got masses to show you. I'm really excited. Let's get started. This space is long overdue a spruce up. It hasn't been touched since last year. So it's time to get cleaning and painting. After washing down all the cladding and the paintwork, I'm then able to see exactly what needs to be done. The veranda floor needs a really good go over and there are just a few areas where the paint is starting to lift. So the whole thing didn't need painting. It was just these areas where I needed to scrape back. And after several days of priming, undercoating, top coating, all the railings are done. I'm brightening the veranda floor with this Santex masonry paint. Originally, I used swimming pool grout to create a German smear type of effect, a broken paintwork effect. So each year, I just spruce it up with the masonry paint just to keep it nice and bright and also have bits of the brick showing through. The six foot pine kitchen table that lives on the veranda hasn't been painted since 2018. So gosh, that's five years since I last did anything to it. And you can see some of the rain, the weather has got in and it's starting to lift. I'm giving it a sand back, but I'm not taking all the paint off completely because I want to leave some for effect. However, I do need to protect that blonde wood. So I'm going to cover it all in a white oil stain. Now, this one's by Osmo. I've used it in several projects. And the beauty of this product is you can control the intensity of colour, just how deep you want that shade to be by how long you leave it on for before you wipe it off. I'm using a rag here just because I find doing legs much easier with a rag rather than a brush. So once this is dry, I'm going to protect it with a top oil. And while all that's curing, I popped out to the charity shops and I found one with 50% off all stock. So all the price labels you see here, I paid half of that. Absolute bargains. And I found so many of the pieces that I would normally gravitate to. You know, I love my brass. I love my earthenware, stone pots. Anything with a rustic vibe is right up my street. I was also particularly looking for pops of pink and green because I think that's what I'm going to use out here. So I was absolutely delighted when a few of those found their way back home as well. I don't tend to use much colour inside the house. I just naturally gravitate towards a very neutral palette. But when I'm working on the verandas, then I love to bring a little pop of colour. And these glasses provide just that. I found eight of these for just a pound each. So we'll come back to these items later. But for now, we've got to get on with the furniture. The six chairs live on the veranda all year round, as do the other pieces. I also have a rocking chair on there. And aside from a really good clean, I think the rocking chair is quite safe from having anything done to it. However, the other pieces are about to become very friendly with the sander. I'm going to take off a lot of paint off the oak chairs because I love oak when it weathers down, it goes silver. I leave a little bit of paint on because I love that chippy look. But this is pretty much the finish. Sanding this little table brought back so many memories of all these different colour schemes that I've had over the years. So I am leaving those on show. I've had these chairs for decades and each one has been bought just for a few pounds and it's been stripped, it's been painted, it's been repainted, it's been stripped again. This time it's just getting distressed. The seat pads, however, are getting reupholstered, so I'm just taking off those outer layers, ready to cover them inside. Time to reunite the chairs with the table. I've left just one layer of fabric on each of the pads purely because they're going to be used outside and this just makes my life so much easier for reupholstering. I picked this up from a fabric warehouse up in the north of England. I think it was about 18 metres here and I paid just £40 for it. I was looking for something quite neutral and rustic and I think this just fits the bill completely. Absolutely love it. To give the seat pads some protection, I am going to be spraying them with Scotchgard. 
In fact, I spray lots of my outdoor fabrics with Scotchgard. I mean, you know, it's not 100% guaranteed, but at least it gives it a little bit of protection. So that's the table and chairs finished. And now I think it's time for some colour. I found this rug just after Christmas in HomeSense TK Maxx. And although it is 100% wool, I absolutely love it. So blow it. I'm using it. Life on the wild side. I also recently found this cane set for just £40 from my local charity shop. Now the cane was lifting slightly so I dropped some glue and clamps on there but the fabrics are neutral and clean so I couldn't resist. Once I took the backs off I knew it had to come and live on the veranda. The back cushions haven't gone to waste though because if you saw my last video where I did the veranda of the guest cottage I've used them as seat cushions there. I'm using old wooden crates as side tables and a coffee table that I've had for so many years and it keeps moving from room to room, house to house, never really finding a home. I think it now has a new home. I know it's not particularly weatherproof, but then we don't get a lot of rain onto the veranda. So do tell me, do you use the term veranda or do you use the term porch? Can you let me know in the comments where you are from in the world and which term it is that you would use for a covered outdoor space. I'd love to know. So the big old oak armchairs are back in their spots on the veranda and I'm hoping they will silver down over the next few months and years. Just a few more furniture pieces to pop on and I'm creating an elevated area here with potato chitting trays. The rocking chair in its position, yeah, no time for rest, love, on we go. The planters are coming out and they will be filled with greenery later, both faux and real. These tubs were found at HomeSense TK Maxx at the same time as I bought the rug. And that's when the pink and green colour scheme was born. I'm going to use faux palms. The first two I bought from a company called Blooming Artificial a few years ago and the other one I picked up from HomeSense at the same time as I found the rug and the tubs. That was a very fruitful shopping trip. It's quite sheltered in this corner behind the rocking chair but I am going to use pine cones just to wedge it into position so it doesn't move around in the wind. And also because I have a real thing about pine cones and I love the colour and texture. These green tubs have a little bit of a wobbly bottom, which is not a good look, darlings, is it? So I've used a brick in there to weight it down. And also it can get a little windy at this end of the veranda. So the weight hopefully should make it stay in position. I'm doing the same again on this side because this is the most exposed area. And weirdly, we've had such strong winds just lately. So I'm going to give it a little bit more assistance with some upholstery thread, which is super strong. OK, let's get on to soft furnishings and in particular cushions or pillows if you're in America. I have amassed quite a large collection of grey cushions. And actually, I don't want grey anymore. My colour schemes have changed. So my cunning plan is to dye them. But of course, only certain fabrics will dye, like linen, wool, cotton. Now, this is cotton, so I'm hoping this part of the cushion will pick up the dye and possibly even the lining. Who knows? We're going to give it a go. I've had a good experience with this brand before. I dyed some grey cushions brown and they came out a super colour. So I was really pleased with those. So I thought I'd give it a go with these and dye them green for the veranda. It's far cheaper than going out and buying new cushions. I followed the instructions to the letter. Let's see what happens. As expected, that fabric on the top, which I think is acrylic or polyester, hasn't taken it, but the cotton has and the wool has. And it's a beautiful colour. I'm really pleased with the intensity of the colour. I don't know whether the camera picks it up as well, but they look fabulous. So I'm going to try it with these now. And here we go, all lined up, drying in the sunshine. The outer cover obviously wasn't wool or cotton and didn't pick up the dye. However, the lining did. So waste not, want not, I have a cunning plan. I'm actually going to turn them inside out and use them that way. And the pod that was left, I dyed my dress. Now, the label on the dress did say 100% cotton. Obviously, the embroidery and the lace effect 
weren't, but it's just created such a great effect. So I'm super pleased. Save me a fortune. This lime green lightweight pro that I sometimes use as a tablecloth adds a lovely pop of colour at this end of the veranda. I picked up these two faux plants from HomeSense TK Maxx for just £5 each because the pots that they came with had smashed. So at the bottom, they just have the polystyrene. Now, this is a pot that I sprayed with rust spray. Didn't like it anymore. Rubbed it back. I'd forgotten it was pink originally. So it's given a super effect. And just to make it look a little bit more realistic, I've got some moss out of the garden, real moss. And I'm just going to pop it around the bottom there just to elevate it slightly. Now it's time for styling accessories. So this pot can go back in the corner there behind the rocking chair. I'm bringing in a mirror that hubby brought back from a charity shop and I dropped some chalk paint on it. And then a few vintage books, candlestick and a plant just finish it. The big overmantel mirror here was originally found on eBay and was painted gold. So I've used chalk paint and I've screwed it to the wall so it's not going to fall over. The big pink candlestick you will have seen before if you've seen my kitchen spring decorating video. And as it's a pop of pink, it's now found a new home out here on the veranda. This piece of ceramic artwork was done by my daughter when she was just 15, 16 years old. So I always have that out on display because it's very sentimental to me. The giant pink candlestick twin has found its way out here as well. do love to use normal furniture outside. I find buying very specific outdoor furniture really expensive when actually with the right paints and in the right environment, you can use ordinary furniture outside as long as it's protected and tucked right back here on this back wall of the veranda. It's really protected from the elements. And actually, this piece is really modern, cheap pine. So quite frankly, if I wasn't using it on here, it would probably end up on a bonfire. We previously used it to house some electrical equipment, hence the hole at the back that I've just rapidly covered up there. Using house furniture outside also makes your outdoor spaces look like rooms. And that's exactly the look and feel that I love to go for.
I'm constantly changing the table. Blink and it will change again. But for now, I'm just going with some simple white items. I've added some fresh moss to the other faux plant that I bought without a pot and the pot that I rubbed back actually turned out to be yellow underneath. The huge twig heart was a TK Maxx find some years ago and I just every now and then give it another spray with white paint. And now a little bit of coffee table styling. I do love to corral my items so using trays and platters is ideal for achieving this. A few pops of pink with the candles and glassware, but I do think we need to go and get some fresh greenery and flowers. Some clippings from this fur will be ideal because they will last a long time and they've got a lot of interest in there. So I'm having some of that. I think also some daisies for the glassware, um, particularly the little bud vases. It might be nice also for a few of the perennial geraniums to come in as well. I love to style with wildflowers and wild grasses and down in our field at the moment we have an abundance and to go with that I'm going to pick some bracken so no going off to the supermarket or garden centre for me I'm just shopping the field. Come on Bertie let's get these in water. And I've already started restyling the cushions. I much prefer them like that. So that is my summer porch makeover. I just need the temperature to rise and the wind to drop now. Do please let me know what you think in the comments below. And let me know also where you are in the world and do you call it a porch or do you call it a veranda? If you've enjoyed this, then please normal housekeeping, thumbs up, turn notifications on, make sure you're subscribed and please do, do come back and join me on my next video. I do try and post every single week. Sometimes it might be a couple of days late, particularly on a big project like this, but generally it's every week. So I would love to see you back here next time. In the meantime, have a great week and take care of yourself. Happy decorating. Thank you.